Thank you. Well, uh, good morning to everybody. Um, actually, uh, this the original title of this paper was Object Oriented Digital Twins of Parallel Manipulators. But as very correctly uh, pointed out by reviewers, and we are talking actually about simulation. So the connection, the very important connection of the model with the field uh, is not considered in our paper. And so we change uh, properly uh, the, the title of our presentation with object oriented models. Uh, in fact, as correctly described or pointed out by the, the previous presenter, uh, in order to correctly, to properly uh, talk about digital twins, we have to consider the connection of the model with the field. So uh, as already presented, we can talk about digital model when there is no automatic connection between data and our model. Uh, we can talk about a, a digital shadow when the connection is only uh, directed from the physical object to the digital object. In other words, from the field to the model in order, for example, to update the model according to the to the, let's say, to the, the working data. And um, finally, we, we can define a digital twin uh, as the connection between a, a, a digital model and the real plant. But this connection uh, must be uh, bi-directional. So uh, data are used to update uh, the model and accordingly the model is used to, to take decision on, on the, on, on the working of the plant. So uh, actually we are only talking about the process of defining the digital model uh, required by a digital twin. But on the other hand, uh, it is true that the digital twin is based, is largely based on simulation model. And uh, in our opinion, uh, a correct approach to the development of uh, models for digital twins should be uh, a replica as faithful as possible of the physical device. Um, this implies that we have to follow uh, a multi-domain approach uh, and we have to uh, precisely implement a modular approach. Modular approach means, of course, connection of component models. So in our opinion, a digital twin is largely based on a modular approach to, the, to, to, to modeling. In the case of um, uh, parallel manipulators, this, for example, um, do not, does not allow uh, a traditional approach based on Lagrangian in the sense that with the Lagrangian approach, you have to model your mechanical system as a whole. You are not allowed to model single components. And so the, in our opinion, the solution, uh, the correct approach is to apply object-oriented modeling as allowed by the Modelica language. So we, we try to develop the models of parallel manipulators by exploiting largely the modular approach uh, allowed by object-oriented modeling. Um, so our, uh, our uh, basic assumptions were to use only components of the standard Modelica library. Uh, so no line of code has been written in order to develop these models. Uh, the management of the closed kinematic chains is completely transparent to the user. This is a, a, a basic problem when dealing with uh, models of uh, parallel manipulators. Uh, and we, we, we based the, the, the dealing with the closed kinematic chains directly on the symbolic manipulation process uh, performed by the environment, by Open Modelica. And finally, the constructs of the Modelica language have been used to associate the state variables of the model to the actual degrees of freedom only, namely to the actuator's coordinate, and to guide the symbolic manipulation and the calculation of the initial configuration of the simulation. So these were the, 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 the basic uh, issues uh, uh, inspiring the work done. 
So uh, first we have considered the model of a Delta robot. Uh, this is a real robot. Uh, um, Morris and several mechanisms are provided by Mitsubishi, while the, the, the mechanical structure was provided by uh, an Italian firm. And uh, the kinematic structure of the Delta model is well known, is depicted uh, in the, to the right. So we have two, two, platf two platform, a fixed platform and uh, uh, a fixed platform and uh, um, a moving platform. Uh, the moving platform is, uh, is um, moved through three legs um, described by a, a parallelogram structure. Uh, of course, the, the motion uh, obtained is a translational motion of the, of the moving platform in the space. So uh, another uh, advantage uh, allowed by the modelic approach is uh, the possibility to implement a hierarchical approach. So this is uh, the top level of the model uh, where we have considered uh, the world reference, of course, uh, the global parameters of the robot, lengths, uh, uh, parameters of the motors, uh, and so on. This is... Um, this is uh, quite comfortable uh, in the sense that we have a, a single point in, in, in to assign the values of the parameters. Um, a, a very basic, very basic motion planner uh, and uh, a, another very basic uh, controller structures, motion controllers. Then the mechanical model has been uh, uh, connected to the motion controllers through the, um, through the, uh, um, let's say the connector, the control bus um, um, based on an expandable modelica connector. Uh, the mechanical structure of, of the robot is, uh, as I already said, composed by two platforms, one fixed and the other moving, uh, connected by three legs. Then uh, we, can, we can go down into the hierarchy of the model by considering the model of one leg. Of course, uh, these are not just icons, but they are uh, icons of the underlying modelica models. So we have the structure of three legs. Uh, here we have the three servo mechanisms and uh, the three parallelogram structures implementing the legs. Uh, as, uh, regarding the servo mechanisms, as I said before, only component, only com standard components of the standard uh, Modelica library have been used. So uh, the model of a servo motor, uh, the gearbox, uh, rotational joint, and so on. Well, actually, the, the model of the servo motor was uh, developed in this work, but it is in turn made of uh, standard components. So, and finally, uh, going down into the hierarchy, we can uh, show here the structure of the parallelogram. Some remarks. Uh, the current control loop, the, the torque, the current control loop has been approximated with a first order transfer function modeling the control bandwidth. Uh, of course, uh, modeling the electrical dynamics uh, uh, would have implied um, a very large uh, computational burden, not necessary in this case because we were interested in modeling the mechanical dynamics. Uh, the gearbox model has been taken directly from the Modelica standard library, as I said before. Uh, the state variables of the models are the positions and the speed of speeds of the actuators. For these variables, the state select attribute was set to state select dot always, uh, while it was uh, set to state select never for the variables of all the other joints. This in order to guide the symbolic manipulations and the, the computation of the initial position of the robot. The fixed attribute was set to true as I said before, in order to guide the model initialization. Uh, this is the, sorry. 
this is um, a validation uh, transient. Here you can see uh, a pick and place uh, uh, operation. On the left, the real robot, on the right, uh, the, the model. In this, in order to validate uh, our model uh, with, with respect to experimental data, since the controller structure was not uh, um, precisely known, uh, of course, we, we considered industrial controllers, but the parameters of the controllers were not known. We performed the validation by imposing the positions and the velocities of the end effector and then computing the torques applied by the model. Then these torques were, com were compared to the measured torques on, on the real robot. The results are the following. Here you can see the measured actuator speeds, uh, motor angles, and here you can see the comparison between the joint torques, the computed joint torques, and the measured joint torques. This for the first joint, the second joint, and the third joint. So in blue, the, the blue line uh, is relevant to the, the data, uh, and the, the and the red line is relevant to the simulation. Well, some remarks. Of course, well, in our opinion, the, the comparison is quite good, but however, some discrepancies are highlighted in the form, for example, of a vibratory mode in the experimental data. Uh, the main cause of these discrepancies is probably attributable to the adoption of ideal gear and spherical joints model, not taking into account, for example, friction backlash and elasticity. Uh, the vibratory mode modes detected are most likely due to the compliance of the parallelogram rods modeled as rigid. And it is also possible that at high operating speeds, the same structure on which the robot is fixed may introduce vibrations. Then we move to the modeling of um, a steward platform. This is another real st uh, steward platform uh, on, on the left, the, the, the mechanical, the real device, on the right, the kinematic structure. Uh, as you well know, the a steward platform is made again by a fixed platform um, connected through universal joint to the legs, six legs, allowing six degrees of freedom of the moving platform. Uh, legs are made uh, essentially by um, a prismatic joint, so we can introduce a lower leg, a prismatic joint, and, and an upper leg. Uh, the moving platform is uh, connected to the legs through spherical joints, and finally we have the moving platform. Uh, the exactly the same the uh, hierarchical structure used for the Delta robot has been applied. So here again, we have brief, very briefly the world reference, the global parameters, uh, the motion planner, the motion controllers, and the mechanical structure made up by legs uh, and the two platforms. Again, the connection of the servo motors to the controllers has been performed through uh, an expandable connector. In this, of course, here we have six identical legs. Uh, in this case, legs, as we have seen, are made by uh, prismatic joints. So we have here again a servo motor and uh, uh, a universal joint connecting the, the leg to the fixed platform and a spherical joint connected the leg, connecting the leg to the moving platform. Uh, in turn, the cylinder, the electrical cylinder is made up by two uh, bodies, a stator and a rotor, a prismatic joint, and again, we have a gearbox and a screwdriver in order to convert, of course, the rotational motion of the motor with the translational motion of the prismatic joint. In this case, uh, we did not perform uh, an experimental validation, but instead we used the model in order to automatically compute the inverse dynamics. 
So uh, uh, thanks to uh, uh, a component of the Modelica standard library, uh, co uh, converting the motion of a, of a joint uh, into uh, the applied torque, we, um, we replicated the, the, the model of our Stuart platform uh, by, uh, by driving this second model uh, directly through the motion of the first Stuart platform. In other words, the first Stuart platform is controlled through uh, joint controllers. Then uh, position, velocity, and acceleration of each joint uh, was were uh, imposed to the second model of the Stuart platform in order to uh, compute the applied torques. Uh, finally, we compared the uh, computed torques by the first model with the computed torques by the second model, of course, uh, hoping to obtain exactly the same result. Johnny, may I kindly request you to conclude your presentation yes, yes. soon? Uh, I, um, I'm going to the, to the, to the, to, to the end. This is the uh, transient uh, model, and this is the uh, comparison uh, between the computer torques. As you can see, of course, they are identical, apart from numerical errors. So, uh, final remarks. Uh, the inverse dynamic model was obtained directly without any, without any manipulation from the direct dynamic model. Again, in turn, uh, the ride uh, without manipulation. The model was built in a modular way using only library models. And the approaches described in the lecture, literature require a specific analytical approach. In some cases, the use of symbolic manipulators. Of course, the question of the computational efficiency of the generated model remains open and it, it is to be investigated in future works. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>